I'm gonna go over some of the gear I use for LiveScope. Some graphs, some pole mounts, different types of wiring, some wiring tips. Then we're gonna bench test the whole LBS32 system, connect all the wires, head over to the boat, go over the current setup I'm running right now. The pole, graph mount, wiring, network, and the battery. Then I'll throw in some 32 and 34, running at the same time. All right, and here are the three graphs I run on the boat and their resolutions. On the UHD 93, it's gonna be missing two ports. So it's gonna be missing yellow and a network. So these two are gone. Yeah, so on the 93, it shows 18 gauge wire. And on the ultras, it shows 16 gauge wire. Three amp fuse, eight amp fuse, eight amp fuse. So if you're going from 93 to 106 or 126, you definitely have to change the power cable. Think about the echo maps, they all have a sonar port, all the oranges on the 106 mount. So the main thing you're going to notice here is it won't go down 90 degrees flush. It's just hitting the wood. These are amplifier distribution power blocks, but they're pretty good just to sit in here and take off what you want, add what you want. Alright, this is the battery I'm going to be using, 100 amp hour. 12.8. It's kind of my bank fishing rig. So this is going to be some 10 gauge wire running all through grass. All right, here goes some quick battery calculations. 126 SV, 106, 93, GLS 10, and GMS 10. Amp ratings, and this is max amp ratings. 3, 3, 1, 1, 1. Total of 9. For 10 hours, you'll need a 12 volt, 90 amp hour. All right, here's another example. You got a 126, a GLS 10, and an LVS. Max is gonna be three, one, total of four amps per hour. Times 10 hours, 40 amp hours, 12 volt. And that's all three on same settings. Life scope looks like Atari on every on every screen, doesn't matter. See the 106 is at 134, 134, the 126 and 131 for the 93. It's like the 93 always reads a little bit lower. So we're switching out our 10 gauge for 6 gauge. Like we gained a little bit on the 93, just 0 0.1, 0.1 on the 126. Network and power. So you see, this is that little eight pin that converts to a five pin right here. But remember, it's two piece. So there's a little five pin connector here. Five right here, eight right here. And this is 90% of your live scope non-connection issues right here. It's probably about at least six foot network to black box, six foot. But you wanna extend it. That's why I have this. Network in. Black box, GLS 10, two, we're gonna go with the 126. You do not use this port unless you have an LVS 12. You can go right into your network port. You gotta be real careful when you hook these up. You wanna make sure it notches in. When it notches in, kinda of give it a wiggle, tighten it up. So you always want a 10 gauge feed going into your fuse. And a little 10 gauge fuse like this, that 10 gauge fuse might be 20 gauge or 22 gauge. It's way too small. So you never want to run a fuse before the original Garmin fuse. Just go straight power. If you don't have a main cutoff switch, you gotta add something like this. 10 gauge wire. 10 gauge wire. All right, so we're gonna hit the on button. 
see what happens. It's like a steady red, not blinking. It's like it's connecting or something. Red, red, green. So that means we're good. You see that speck right there shooting out? That's how you know it's live. Right there. All right, let's move on to mounting the light scope or mounting the transducer. All right, so this is the kind of pole I use. Any style like this usually works pretty good. And it can go into a removable base, which slides into something, or it can go into a permanent base. And it works on friction. So you get it in there, tighten this up, and it has restriction. You can lock it in. A clamp over here to clamp the pole, and then this works on friction. Pretty much I can turn the pole if I want this a little bit tighter, tighten it up. It's right at an inch and a quarter. And that inch and a quarter fits any of these brackets perfectly any of the transducer mount so inch and a quarter is about the right size all right whenever you're running a pole you definitely want to run a zero degree mount and what that means is where the transducer mounts it's zero degrees it's something you gotta buy separate but it is a garmin piece they make for pretty much ice fishing or pole mounting it has these knobs this is the original knob and on my last one this metal strips out and it breaks away from the plastic so this upgrade knob is way better on the locking collar right there this is the original part I've already broke two of these that's the part that locks it in and this is the new design it's just a one piece 3d printed but it's a little bit stronger so it's always good to upgrade this piece and the knob all right so this is a DIY pole it's gonna be PVC conduit one inch PVC half inch PVC going inside but this looks like three quarter because it's one of these fittings so it, so it's gonna be half inch with this speed fitting into the one inch right here so I can twist and then grind it down a little bit and then three quarter coupling and then you're back to three quarter here so you just put three quarter PVC in for the handle and here's the clamp setup just a clamp adjustable arm and a handlebar bracket so you can clamp this onto, I guess like a pontoon rail, piece of your boat, some kind of rail, rod holder. I used to use this one on the dock. Go into a half inch to three quarter adapter, three quarter coupling at the end. And that brings us back to the inch and a quarter that we need transducer on a pole because I have an Altera and that's a self deploying trolling motor. It's way too hard to put the uh, transducer on the trolling motor. You gotta put all these gadgets on there. But if you are putting on a trolling motor, pretend this is a trolling motor. Motor, shaft. You're gonna have to use the eight degree mount to clear the motor. So you have to angle the transducer like so to clear that motor down there. A zero degree won't work here. A good option would be get one of those mounts to keep it zero degree out here. That'd work pretty good. If you're building a pole or your trolling motor is too skinny, the shaft, just put some Gorilla Tape in there. So it's probably about six wraps of Gorilla Tape. All right, so you're putting it on your trolling motor and you, your trolling motor doesn't have a transducer at the bottom of the motor. This is gonna be your best option, the barrel mount. It's because you can put your transducer on there and just, you can twist the barrel mount until the transducer's at zero degree which gives you the best picture. If you're up here on an eight degree, you're always gonna be turning at an arc. This is that mount that I was showing you earlier. I used to have it mounted right here, and this is how I did a console live scope. All right, this is another place I can mount the pole. This is our removable base. It goes into this, self-tapped in. I have the LVS 34 on the same pole. Transducer's going down that hole, and this one's nut and bolted. And I ended up cutting out one of my rod holders to get to the nuts on the bottom. And right on the anchor locker, that's where I mounted the graph bracket, or graph mount. Bolt it right there, 
So it is a double graph mount right now. I'm just running one graph. One graph pretty much can do everything, so I'm kind of downsizing up here. But if you unbolt this main bolt, put this back on, it goes back to a single bracket. So when I first ordered it, it was a single bracket. We just put one graph on here. You get this piece, you can go double bracket. Another reason I got the cornfield mount, because it can fold down and it has that gas shock. So if the trolling motor were to, I guess, hit the graph mount, you can get it out the way, launch the trolling motor. And this is where all the magic happens. So the wiring from the graph, or grass, goes through this cornfield puck. The mount's nut and bolted. All right, and the battery I'm running is gonna be a 12 volt, 230 amp hour. Kind of big, but it fits, barely. It's gonna be on four gauge wire with an 80 amp fuse to the kill switch. From the kill switch, it's gonna go four gauge, distribution block, then this four gauge goes to the other end of the battery. That's normally how I would run it, but I've been thinking about moving this uh, LBS32 to the transom. This is my water ground. It has continuity to the screw. So, on an aluminum boat, you could just grind off the corner. You screw it down, the water grounds it. And on the GMS-10, the network switch, normally a 126 would go into here, and the GLS-10 would go into here. It doesn't matter, there's no ins or outs on this, so any any graph for GLS-10 can go into any one of these. This is the 6 gauge, going back to the console. The 16 gauge is going to go to that USB, which I'll turn on, it shows 13.6. And then, I don't know if you can see it blinking, but it also turns on the heading sensor. So that's what these two wires are. Alright, charger is going to be a... A 10 amp Gen Pro, kind of like lithium, AGM, everything. Then the actual charging cable comes up here. This is where the trolling motor used to power. But I just kind of drilled it out. You can see the old hole. And I turned it into the charging plug. But when I did that, the trolling motor, I ended up having to hardwire it. So it goes into the grommet with the network cable. And because I had to hardwire the trolling motor, I got a, the kill switch back here now. That's the breaker for it. Not to mention, one of my network cables, this one, goes all the way to the console. From the front, from the GMS-10, network to the back of this cradle. Network out to the 93 on the console. This is sonar from the GT-56, which works way better on the 126 than it did on the 93. This used to be on the back of the 93 on the console, but you gotta remember the Ultras put out a little bit more wattage compared to the 93. So. Right, that's where I keep the 93. I've got it reinstalled. It's flush mounted. And this does use the... Both these are hooked up to NEMA 2000. There were some gauges back here. I think it was fuel, tack, speed. Except for the fuel gauge. I just moved the fuel gauge down. I kind of didn't trust the NEMA 2000 with the fuel in the front is an electronics battery so I got it running this USB USB on the console and USB inside the dash if you remember that 6 gauge from the front from the main distribution block it goes right here so we got 6 gauge coming in it's what 126 93 USBs and the Celix and if I was to add that 32 to the transom I'd have to just add it in here. There's also a port open at the top. And the wiring on the boat, that's a whole nother can of worms. I'll do that on another video. All right, I'll see you on the water for the next part. See, I got the 32 on the bottom, the 34 on the top. And both of these have the same settings. And they're both 126 Ultras. The gain's a little bit higher on the 34. That's just where they both look the best. Just gonna throw it right into that tree. Yeah, I know I haven't been making as many fishing videos as I thought I was going to. But I also have a DIY playlist on my page or on my channel. 
probably gonna start filling up that that playlist with just random DIY. I know I have the the DIY uh, the DIY portable live scope and the DIY double seat. I'm probably gonna start putting some random DIY stuff. Very random. I just thought I'd have a lot more time to go fishing than I do. Yeah, so none of these guys even are, none of these guys are even flinching. Looks like hybrid bait. part of the day where the picture just starts getting really bad so whenever you lose that uh that direct sunlight even if you're in the shade you're gonna get a lot of temperature changes in the water I put every graph on the boat and every live scope. This is why I got such a big battery. If you total it all up with the USBs, I'm at 20 amps per hour max though. For 10 hours, you need a minimum of 200 amp hours at 12 volt.